Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I'm a little late because I had to do something this morning with my for my son and did some family stuff, but here we go. We had a, uh, yesterday, uh, I was looking at, it was like one of those days where you're looking at your phone and you're like, what's, why is the market doing this? What's going on? I think the, the summary of, of the market uh, do, having gone down and all has mostly to do with with the geopolitical things with Israel and Iran and all that, but also, and very importantly, tax season. We've had a Bitcoin and crypto run up, and then April 15th is coming, so a lot of people are having to do selling for tax purposes. That combined with the geo geopolitical stuff, but that's all great. When I see when I see these kind of pullbacks. Everything that pulled back had absolutely nothing to do with XRP. Nothing's different, nothing's changed, nothing's happened for the worse. It's all progressing down the road towards regulations and then eventual utility. And so, and, and develop further development and all the different things. And so, when I see these, these are just opportunities for me. I, like I bought some more XRP this morning. But there's more going on, folks. Listen to, Lin this is Lynette Zhang. By the way, um, well, I'll get to that, but Lynette Zhang will be at XRP Las Vegas. And promise people that are listening to this, we haven't seen anything yet. And I mean anything. This is just the opening act of this whole entire thing crumbling apart piece by piece. And if people aren't ready from every standpoint and perspective for what's about to come, and most people are not, I mean most, 95% of them have no clue as to where this is going. They don't even know where their enemy is. Again, they're being told this, that, and the other thing, distracted by this, deceived by that. If they really knew who their real enemy was, and that, to, in my view, is, again, the central banks of the world were working together here to destroy the global economy, to bring the consumer to their knees, only to issue in a new system for which they're gonna make us beg. They're gonna make us beg for it. Uh, people have no idea. Uh, None, yeah. but that's where we're going, and there is no I've, doubt about it. I've told you a thousand times, Bitcoin was created for the purpose of hurting us into this system so that they could switch it over to the CBDC-based system and 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 switch over to this new system, which is, and the, the things that are gonna matter are the digital assets with real utility. Don't forget that. Here's Jim Rickards. You guys say I wanted to drop a footnote on cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in particular. It's I studied it for for twelve years or, or actually longer. Um, he was in the CIA. The, the CIA used him to war game and remember that term because you, if you think that the United States has not war gamed what's going on in Israel and Iran and what's going on with crypto and digital assets, you've lost your mind. And uh, it has, other than the smuggling and tax evasion, it has no use case. Yeah. Uh, it's a novelty. Um, it took me a very, I understand the technology, I read the papers, I get the math, but it took me a very long time to figure out what it actually is, or at least a good analog. And to me, it's a casino chip. I went to the casino, I put $1,000 down the roulette table, they give me my chips, I gamble, I can win or lose. Uh, at the end of the night, I take my chips over to the cashier, I get dollars and I walk outside. If I walk outside with the chips, they're worthless. I can't buy a cup of coffee with those chips. So if you're in the crypto world, you can train it. By the way, there's very good research, rigorous research by MIT scholars that shows that over 90% of the Bitcoin transactions are wash trades. It's just a small number of whales yeah. moving back and forth. It's like Kennedy and um, uh, and others, you know, ramping stocks in the 1920s. Uh, it's it's also hallucinogenic in the sense that people see what they want to see. So it's a uh, it's kind of a clown world. It's a form of entertainment. You can make, I know people made $20, $40 million, paid their taxes and walked away. So that's real, but a lot of people committing suicide because of what they've lost. So uh, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a joke. Uh, it's not going anywhere. Now, let's talk about CBDCs because that's real. So All right. Then you've got Andy Sheckman. Listen to this one going around. Can we talk about? He's also going to be at XRP Las Vegas. Folks, let me, uh, 
Well, I'll get to it, like I said. India importing all of this silver using the suppression of the brain dead West. They know it. And they know that at some point, no one will be stupid enough to trust the Western price and deliver, deliver at those stupid prices. And that's when, boom, the COMEX and the LBMA bust. And that's when the new price is set on a cash and carry basis in Moscow, in Dubai, and in Shanghai, and other parts of the world that accumulate and produce and respect these commodities for what they should be. And it won't just be precious metals. It'll be commodities uh, or, or, or soft commodities, like corn, like wheat, like the, the new BRICS grain exchange, but how about the fact that they own the LME, the London Metals Exchange, which isn't precious metals, it's base metals, steel, copper, aluminum, zinc, nickel, all that stuff, right? So they own it, they own it. And now they wanna start putting the warehousing of all of these metals traded in London on the LME in China. Okay, so there's a reason, look, folks, most, most uh, really 95% of crypto of channels or social media influencers in, in crypto are 100% crypto. It's not uh, Bitcoin or gold. Well, my position has always been. It's not. You don't have to do all or nothing. You, you may believe in Bitcoin. I, I, I think Bitcoin will most likely be allowed to live, but it's never going to replace gold. It's just not. Look at, look at what's happened in the last two days. But be... Physical gold is is always going to be a thing. Now, if you if you want some, I have a sponsor, Miles Franklin. You can go to milesfranklin.com. You click on the sign up button right there. You type in right right here in the referral code D A I Gold, and then um, they've got on their website they've got they will always have specials going on if you uh, roll down there. Now, what what's interesting about the reasons that uh, that the market has come down. All of this has everything to do with, with the geopolitical things going on. And gold is, a, in a, is an extremely important part of everything you're watching right now. So I actually talked to Brad Combs and he said he's going to make sure that when he has Andy Sheckman, Lynette Zhang, Jason Cousins, all the gold people on, the, on stage at XRP Las Vegas, that the, these geopolitical conversations will be had too about what's going on right now in the crypto market and all of that um, as well. So it's, you, you need to go and get your tickets. In fact, uh, he's going up, Brad Kahn said he's going up, prices are going to go up on April 25th because he doesn't want to be sitting there ha uh, having to turn people away because he's headed towards a sell out of this thing. All right, so uh, those, all that's in the description. I have two different discount codes in DAIXRP.com if you want to go join there. All right, so this is what happened in Bitcoin uh, yesterday, and, and the market just got completely bashed to pieces. XRP, everything got hit. Um, if you look, the market's now at $2.33 trillion. For me, this is just an excellent buying opportunity. That's the way I see it. XRP, I think, got down as low as like 42 cents or something. Now it's popped back up. It's about 59, 49 cents. Um, Ryan Selka says it all. Some of you weren't here for the, the COVID crash and it shows. Crypto bull market is inevitable provided Bitcoin doesn't execute a 6102. Relax. Sorry, he said Bowden. Provided Biden doesn't execute a 6102. What's a 6102? Well, that's a national. That's when they declare a national emergency, and Executive Order 6102, the heist of the century, is right here. In April 5th, 1933, FDR issued Executive Order 6102, making it illegal for anyone in the United States to own gold by penalty of up to $10,000 fine or 10 years in prison, everyone in the country was ordered to turn in their gold to the government by the end of the month. Executive Order 6102 is one of the most important milestones in, in the history of money, bookended by the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913 and end of Bretton Woods system 1971. It was a pivotal part of the process by which the USA abandoned gold for the fiat standard. All right, that's what he's talking about. 
Blockchain backer says, got cash, me too. But it's fading as I'm starting to accumulate these levels. 702 rejected it violently, a, a constant concern. We watched it for months, wasn't fun for me or you. I saw the viewer numbers. Now we can return to looking for optimism and reversals up. Now, on a day like today, you need this reminder, so listen up. Don't fuck this up. Yeah, buy and hold, don't use leverage. Use cold storage, do the right thing. Don't get too speculative, don't FOMO. Just don't fuck this up. These are, this, this is the biggest opportunity we've ever been given. I've said that all the way from 2020 onwards, and in fact, I said it all the way back in 2012. It's the biggest macro trade of all time. Don't fuck this up. And if you're not a crypto person, technology is one of the biggest opportunities we've ever been given, the exponential age. Again, don't fuck this up. Just be careful, just buy, hold, have a long-term time horizon and learn how to take pain. And when there is pain, you buy more. Unless something changes the thesis that suddenly we're all gonna turn to ne Neanderthals and nobody's gonna use technology ever again, it is going up. It's as simple as that. And unless something changes that we're not breaking the financial system and that the internet has disappeared, we will go to blockchain technology. It's as simple as that. That's all you need to know. Everything else is just fucking noise. Now, do you know what it means to me to don't F this up? Well, for me, it's two things. One, gold and precious metals have been suppressed by the COMEX and the, and the West for all these years. And everybody's been accumulating. And when this, this switchover happens, I believe that's going to coincide with a really, really high gold pl price. So not effing this up, for me, is accumulating physical gold. Also, not effing this up for me is summarized right here. Buy digital assets, this is what I'm doing. Buy digital assets that are going to have real world utility, not the crap that has no use. Because I agree with Jim Rickards, anything that doesn't have a utility to it in digital assets is like fool's gold or whatever you want to call it. I think Jim, Jim Rickards back there was calling it um, a casino chip. I have no qualms saying definitively, if we continue to drive the success we're driving, we're going to drive a massive amount of demand for XRP because we're solving a multi-trillion dollar problem. Mm -hmm. Now, Brad, I have, Brad Garlinghouse cannot come out and say, we're going to drive the price of XRP up massively. That's why he doesn't say it. But I'm reading between the lines. I know exactly what he's saying. Egreg Crypto, you only live once. Breaking news, we've dipped into the YOLO band, whatever that is, despite yesterday's nerves moments, nervous moments, especially for newbies, veterans saw it as a life-changing buying opportunity. You're damn right. Stay steady. We are going to pump so hard you'll regret not buying at these levels. Then Egrag Crypto, uh, I'll, uh, what does he say here? The neck, he says, we accurately put, predicted the range. Uh, and he says, the next move could be between 1,000 and 3,000%. In these turbulent trading days, it might be hard for 99% to comprehend the market's performance. However, the chart below indicates a potential price target of between $10 and $22 if similar partial moves are repeated. Um, and then, see, this is what it's all about. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over maybe this and part of the other thing I was talking about. Before we leave you, I wanted to show you this, though. Remember, this is the same Chris Dixon from Andrews and Horowitz who met with... Um, Jay Clayton and initiate to initiate what became a, uh, in my opinion, a Bitcoin Ethereum monopoly attempt. Um, and now he's acting like he cares all about getting regulations. And he's there meeting with the Congress people. And this is a tweet from John Deaton back December 27th, 2021. We learned that Clayton told A16Z's Chris Dixon to assemble a working group and write up a proposal Dixon looks to Lowell Ness from Perkins Coie, who has worked for A16Z from the beginning. Pete, uh, Perkins Coie is a member of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. The, these A16Z lawyers write up a safe harbor. Okay, so they thought that they had the kind of uh, regulatory environment they wanted because they thought they had an, a monopoly for Bitcoin and Ethereum. All those that how many of those token issuances that Joe Lubin did the token foundry and all that. How many do you think these guys were involved in? 
And I said, I wish Chris Dixon had been so worried about the entire crypto industry back in 2018 instead of trying to get Bitcoin and Ethereum a monopoly. So we're going to go into the group now and we're going to talk about the war games and the, 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 this, these geopolitical tensions over the Israel and Iran and all the, and how gold inter, is interplayed into this and all the different stuff. Um, and I'm, what I may, okay, I may just go over the, the lending thing uh, tomorrow. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that away we go.